Let us say amen for the smell course. We thank God for this night. Thank God for Pastor Snargrass and this marvelous progressive family allowing me to come over one more year. Amen. 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 And we have a good time year after year. It's been a marvelous ride coming and sharing the word of God with you. And it's uh, another year for us to rejoice together. And all of you have been with us year after year. Recognize what night this is, don't you? Anybody remember what night this is? Defrag, Defrag night. See that? <laughs> Defrag night. Amen. 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 You got it already. Defrag night. And and, and of course that's an old term, right? Defrag is an old term. Uh, I don't think we have to defrag anymore. I think they've got it built into computers nowadays. That they just kind of defrag themselves. But you know, the, the term itself means a lot to us. When we think about this first night of revival and we think about uh, a number of other uh, systems that we could use to get rid of stuff that, that we don't really need, amen? So we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, but I do want to recognize uh, uh, people from Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church being here tonight, and of course the Progressive family, and my precious wife is here, and I frequently say of her, she's 98 and a half pounds of pure sugar. You gained a pound, didn't you? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually say 97, but not, she picked up a pound, amen. 98 pounds, 98 and a half pounds of pure sugar. Amen. Amen. That's why that's why I jitter when I walk. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I thank God for my two daughters being here, one from New York. Stand up, Denise. Let them see you. My other daughter came in from California. Stand up, Crystal. Let them see you. My baby's been flying all day, so I'm going to hurry up and do what God has given me to do so they can go go to bed. Amen. <laughs> They're, they're out of here to Oak Muggy, Oklahoma in the morning. And Crystal said four o'clock. I don't, I don't know. I don't know anybody get up that time of morning. So <laughs> she's already rubbing her eyes. Amen. But I thank God for them being in for uh, the pastor and wife's anniversary uh, this coming Sunday at Ebenezer. And thank God for them coming in to celebrate with us. And I appreciate the Lord for uh, all of you that are here. I don't take anybody for granted. All of you who are here, uh, we praise the Lord for. Uh, I want to uh, give you my topic at, for the sake of the ushers who are standing at their posts. Uh, we thank God for them serving tonight. And I appreciate the Lord for all of the officers of both Progressive and Ebenezer. Amen. The chairman of the board of Ebenezer is here tonight. Deacon Curtis Hammond Sr. His dear wife is here with him and Auntie Della is in the house. And all of you all. And all of the officers from Progressive. And certainly, uh, you gave me a theme. Uh, Philippians 4.13 is the verse that you gave me. The topic or theme is declaring we can determine that we will do viable ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Declaring we can determine that we will do viable ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I have a purpose tonight. I want you to, I want to just encourage you to, do, to live up to your theme. You said you wanted to do viable ministry. You, you have to be prepared to do that. So we're going to talk about that tonight, but I want to encourage you to be about your father's business. Do exactly what you said you believe that you have been called to do. I have a three-point proposition for you that I'm going to use over three nights. Um, number one, preparing to do viable ministry in Jesus' name. Secondly, which we'll do tomorrow night, if the Lord say the same, performing viable ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the third night, uh, pay coming for performing uh, viable ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Those three topics is what we'll use, hopefully. That could change, and, and frequently it does, but uh, I'm, I'm looking at talking to you uh, over these next couple of nights from those three topics. Tonight, I want to look at preparing uh, you and me 
preparing you and I to be about our father's business relative to uh, doing viable ministry. Viable to me means ministry that's worthy of uh, the time it takes to get it done, the preparation it takes to get it done. And so I've added a verse, if you don't mind, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. I want to use that verse to help us to uh, drill down on some things I believe that's worth looking at tonight as we prepare our hearts for the next two nights. Now, over the years uh, that I've been coming here, we've been talking about this business of defragging. And, and defragging is good because in the operating system of computers, what tends to happen is when you do uh, uh, an operation or you do a calculation or you do something on a computer, you ask something of the unit to give you, it has to make different connections on the inside of the unit. And what tends to happen is all kinds of uh, networking is going on on the inside of that unit, which slows it down over time. You've got all of these broken pieces on the inside of that PCU, and uh, it won't function the way it's designed to function because there's so much junk going on. I wish, so, I wish somebody could see this. So, so much junk going on on the inside of the PCU. And so what you have to do in the old days is you would have to go in and you would have to defrag it. If you wanted that thing to operate at optimal levels, you would have to go in and defrag the unit. Once that happened, the speed would pick up, your, whatever you're trying to do on the unit would be swift in its operation. I, I don't know, I, we got a bunch of city folk in here, you might not be able to relate to this illustration I'm finna give you. Every now and then we'd have to weed our gardens, where I came from. You, you could be growing all kinds of beautiful vegetables and stuff in your garden and everybody uh, would go out at harvest time and pick marvelous things and you'd have a, a time when you can make wonderful salads because you've grown all kind of good stuff out there. You know what I'm talking about, you about from Arkansas. And, 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 but, but every now and then weeds would start coming up and, and you, would have to, you would have to pay attention to your garden. And watch this, even on the hottest days, when everything else would stop growing, matter of fact, our, our yards would go dormant at a certain, certain temperature uh, when it gets really hot. But you know something? Weeds. Weeds, Digger Strickland, will grow when nothing else will. Mark, you, you hear that? We, weeds, weeds will grow when nothing else will. So every now and then you'd have to weed your garden. I'm going somewhere with this. Just stay with me. I'll stay with me. And in our lives, when we say we want to do viable ministry in Jesus' name, it means we have to mind the shop. We have to guard our hearts. Because if we're not careful, stuff will creep in. Stuff will creep in and it will slow you down. It'll slow your prayer life down. It'll slow your reading down. I love Judge Judy, I have to watch it. <laughs> a amen, amen. Four o'clock on channel four. Judge Judy coming on, amen. And if I'm in the middle of studying something, brother pastor, I have to guard myself, I have to watch myself. Because I have my TV on in my office and I'll be looking down at my Bible and I'll be looking up at Judy. So I have to make a choice as to what I'm going to do if I'm going to be prepared to be about my father's business on a Bible study night on Wednesday. I'm sitting at my desk getting ready to teach when Judy comes on and impacts my processes. <laughs> I, I know nobody in here has that problem but me. But there are, uh, I see a hand in the back. Don't admit nothing. I'm just, I'm just, I see two hands. Amen. Listen, if 
in fact, we want to do what God wants us to do, and we want to do it in a way that glorifies him, and he's going to be able to use us and maximize the gifts that he's given to us, we need to weed the garden every now and then. Uh, you go, you're going to get it in a minute. We need to weed the garden every now and then. We need to defrag the unit every now and then. We need to get the soot out the globe every now and then. I know you can't relate to that either. I'm old school. We'll get there after a while. But I want to use tonight, just for a little while, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Number five. What's going on in the narrative? The Apostle Paul is the writer of the book. He's written to, this is his second something, third letter to the church at Corinth. He's answering uh, the questions that have been raised by the Judaizers, people who have crept into the church mm -hmm. and tried to poison the minds of the believers against the Apostle Paul. They are questioning his apostolic authority. And what he's saying to them is, if anybody knows that I am an apostle, you ought to know. Your salvation came as a result of God using me to preach to you. And if anybody know the authenticity of my gift and my ministry, you ought to know. And so he comes down to this fifth verse and he lifts it up in such a way that they have to examine their own hearts. I want to say to us tonight that we ought to take an introspective look. What I mean by that is we ought to look into our own hearts. Listen to what Paul says. One verse. Listen to what he says. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine. <laughs> examine your neighbor. Examine your husband. Examine your wife. Examine Uncle Leroy or Auntie Sally. Examine your children, your mama and daddy, examine them. What, the, what does he say? Examine yourselves. Take an introspective look. Look in your own heart. Listen, it's been a year since I've been here. A year. And over a year's time, if you've not been very careful about your spirituality, about your lives, Mm -hmm. Stuff can get in there and kind of hinder you mm -hmm. from being about what God would have you to be about and why he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Stay with me, stay with me. We're going to get there in a minute. So we have to every now and then slow down, right. raise some questions of the Lord and take that introspective look. Looking into the perfect law of liberty, judging ourselves by the word of the living God, trying to find out, and we ought to be trying to find out whether or not we're measuring up and doing what God would have us to be about at any given time. Are you listening? If we take our eye off the garden, weeds will certainly show up. If you stop being particular about your spirituality, you will certainly find yourself someplace where you don't want to go. Are you listening? When God has cleansed us and sanctified us and set us apart to himself for works of service and we take our eye off of our prayer life and our reading and our fellowship and our worship and our music that we're listening to that feeds our very souls, after a while stuff will start happening to us. Yes, uh -huh. Stuff that God has pushed out of us in days gone by. We find ourselves creeping back to the ash heap of the, of the garbage pit and picking up some stuff that God has already cleansed us of. The writer of Proverbs says, it's like a dog returning to his vomit. Yeah, I, I heard that. 
That's nasty. Mm. Oh, it's like a pig returning to the to the mud hole. I know you see y'all city folk don't know nothing about that. At 4-H time, we used to have, and people loved Chester Whites because they were a pig that was white all over. Had pink hoofs, pink snout. And people liked to show them because they, they show real nice. People used to cheat, put talcum powder on them. Y'all don't know nothing about it. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to help you go somewhere. Watch this. And that, and that pig would be a prize pig. I mean, you could get blue ribbons with that joke. You know what I'm saying? But if you get him all cleaned up and get his hooves all polished and his nose all shiny and turn your back on that pig are y'all <laughs> turn your back on that pig he's going to the nearest mud hole and all of your work will be for nothing. Why? Because the nature of the pig is to get in the mud. Are you listening to me? What I'm simply saying to us is when God cleanses us and sanctifies us and set us apart to himself, we need to be very careful that we don't find ourselves going back to the mud hole or, or going back to the puke that we just uh, Yeah, I'm glad you don't like it. I'm glad you're going like this. No, you don't want to do that. Amen. So Paul says to the church at Corinth, examine yourselves make sure you are where you ought to be and he says listen at the next statement whether you be in the faith it's not good enough to look the part all of us look saved on Sunday morning <laughs> save on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. We're talking Christianese. Bless the Lord. How you doing? I'm too blessed to be depressed. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just got through fussing all the way to church. Husband sitting on this door, the wife sitting on that door, and the kids are like this. Don't know what's going on. Sunday. So it's not enough to, to look the part. Paul is telling the church at Corinth because they're questioning his apostolic authority. They're questioning, watch this, they're questioning their daddy. They're questioning the one that literally preached them out. And God, by way of the apostle Paul, called them out of darkness into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they got, and they let somebody impact them and skew their vision of who the man is. So he's saying, look at yourselves. Exa examine yourselves. And what I want you to do is figure out whether you're in the faith. Are you really a child of God? Once we get that settled, notice what else he says to them. Prove your own selves. Everybody see that? Prove yourself run, run a little exam to see whether or not you're really in the faith Here, here's one of the questions you can ask if we practically applied this to our own lives would you rather be at the boat or at Bible study <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be at Sunday service or shopping? <laughs> when, when you throw a rock, hit a dog, he holler, ouch! <laughs> no, no, no. I'm kidding, Mark. <laughs> and, 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 and Brother Pastor, you know, sometimes we, we, we're, we're, we're preaching, we're sweating, our robes are soaked, our suits are soaked, our shirts are soaked, and people in the pew are already at Golden Corral, at GC. <laughs> so familiar with Golden Corral that they call it GC. <laughs> already <laughs> trying on outfits. <laughs> I 
going to say it. On the pew, but their hearts and their minds are somewhere else. Right after church, we're going here, we're going there. I mean, all of this stuff's going on while we're sweating. <laughs> Trying to get a word across. And folk are already somewhere else. I, 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 I'm just saying, like Paul would say, examine yourselves. Take this little quiz. Would you be really, rather be pulling that one arm bandit or at Bible study? Or would you rather be at Sunday service or Sunday school as opposed to shopping? Wait, 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 I'm not done. <laughs> would you rather be worshiping God or wishing for a guy? No, 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 no. Or a girl? Y'all for quiet. It is your, is your, is your idea of a good time booze and bumping. Is that your idea of a good time, booze and bumping? Or is it bearing one another's burdens and being a blessing. What is your idea of a good time? I mean, what we're trying to do is examine ourselves and see whether or not we're in the faith. If other things take priority over your pursuit of God, there's something wrong with your relationship. Mm -hmm. If you would rather be somewhere else, doing something else, involved in something else, as opposed to the things that feed your spirit, and that grow you in your faith, there's something wrong with your relationship. And listen to me very carefully. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm simply saying that there, you've allowed some other stuff to grow up while you've not been mining the shop. You've not been taking care of the garden. You've not been watchful for the things that can enter in and hinder you from being what God would have you to be. Tonight is a good night to take an introspective look. Tonight is a good defrag night. See, see, here's the thing. If you will really search your own heart and then pray and ask God to reveal to you stuff that you can't see, or watch this, a stuff you're not willing to see, mm -hmm. And he reveals it to you, and then you pray, Lord, move it. Free me from that past bondage that I've been in. Take it away. I don't want that. I want to be available to you. I want to be about your business. Mm -hmm. Tonight is a good night. Because if you'll do that tonight, if you'll unload some stuff tonight, if you'll take an introspective look and search your hearts tonight, tomorrow night we can rejoice together. <laughs> Friday night we can really get our move on. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We can pick them up and put them down on Friday night. Amen. You know, that's always, amen, that's always glory night. Friday night's glory night. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're talking, we're talking unloading stuff. We're talking being freed from some stuff tonight. And it's, and it's the thing to do, Cynthia, because it allows you then to come with a pure heart tomorrow night and Friday night. Come anxious, come hungry. Remove the blocks, the stumbling blocks, the obstacles tonight. So the Apostle Paul then says to the church at Corinth, examine yourselves, check yourself out, look into your own heart, whether you be in the faith, that's the first question. And then he says, prove your own selves. And then thirdly, he raises a question. Know ye not your own selves? Isn't that amazing? Don't you know that you're a child of God? Don't you know you've been bought with a price? Don't you know Christ hung, bled, and died at Calvary to deliver you into the presence of the Father 
free from your past sins. Romans 4.25 says he was delivered for our offenses, but was raised again for our justification. Romans 5.1 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, God is no longer angry with us. Mm -hmm. The sin debt's already been paid. All we have to do is accept it and move in the glory and the majesty that God has purchased for us by way of the Christ. Amen. Paul is saying, know ye not your own selves. How that Christ is in you except you be reprobates. Except you be worthless. Except you, your life is to no avail. He says, examine yourselves. Yes, sir. He says, prove yourselves. He says, know ye not your own selves. Everybody see that? Yes. How that Christ Jesus is in you, mm -hmm. except you be reprobates. Now, the reality of that next to the last statement is, if in fact Christ is in you, how did he get there? If I'm not an apostle, if I'm not called by God and sent by God to not only preach you out, but to feed you, nurture you, and nourish you up in the things of the Lord, then is Christ not in you? If he's not, then you're reprobate. Mm -hmm. The questions that you're raising relative to my apostolic authority, you have the witness in yourself. Mm -hmm. How long you been here now? 30 what? 27. 27 years. 27 years, you ought to know your pastor is a man of God. Amen. 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 I've been here at Ebenezer 24 years, 23, this is my 23rd anniversary coming up Sunday, but I was there almost a year before I was elected. I'm telling you, Ebenezer ought to know whether or not I'm a, a true man of God, called by God to do this work. Are you listening? Amen. Listen to this. While you are examining yourselves, you might just stumble across some stuff. What, what's funny? I see some people laughing. I, yeah, I know. Country might, people might say, mites are on chickens. What you mean, you might? <laughs> you may just find some stuff. How's that? Uh, it's 8 30 I need to hurry to a close here but I want to I want to help you to understand something I know y'all been watching this bag <laughs> y'all always watch my bags when I bring bags I can't preach because you keep looking at my bag But tonight is a good night to get it right. It's been a year since we had this time together. And so I want to give you an opportunity tonight to, to, to get it right. Because if, unless you are moving in the thing that God has called you to and you are particular about your call and your anointing that God has put upon your life and your gifts that God has in, uh, invested in you, he's fastened to the walls of your heart this glory. And if you're not very careful, you'll be rendered ineffective in what God called you to do. And the people that you ought to be affecting and impacting for the cause of Christ won't be impacted and affected. Are you listening? Unless you bring your A game daily, the enemy will steal the glory that God is trying to get from your life. So I'm saying to us tonight that we need to be very careful about 
what we've gotten ourselves into over this last year. And if you've examined your heart and you know you're 100 and you're keeping it 100 with God day by day, you don't have to worry about stuff. Nothing's been creeping into your life. Your thinking and doing and where you're going and what you're involved in is all 100. You don't have to worry. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But if... <laughs> While you've been examining yourselves, you've come across some stuff. Amen. I want to I just give you a little bit of an illustration with this stuff in my bag to help you to get this picture. A amen. Amen. Y'all know every time I come over here, I, if I got a bag, it's something in there. Right? Amen. Come on, Deacon Hammers. Help me out. Now, I have, a, I have a flashlight here. And this flashlight look really good, doesn't it? But you know something? The longer this flashlight hang around and the more this flashlight is used, the batteries run down in it. And if we're not very careful about minding the fact that the flashlights, batteries aren't charged and up to snuff on a dark night when all the lights out, we won't have any light. We won't. Our flash night will be no good. So we have to make sure that the batteries are charged in the flashlight. Have I got some help in here tonight? Listen, not only that, this is the lamp. <laughs> This lamp is, is a good looking, cool little lamp. Came from my office. It's a really neat lamp. And you can bend it all kind of ways and pull it over on your paper and move it all around. But like this lamp is right now, I can push this button all I want to do and, and nothing's going to happen. You know why? Somebody tell, tell me why that lamp won't work right now. It's, it's no power. It's not plugged into anything. In order for that lamp to function the way it ought to function, that lamp has to be plugged into a power source. And the power source will cause that lamp to light up and illumine whatever it is I want it to illumine. Are you listening to me? Those of us who have not been plugged in, we've been just sitting on the pew, not doing what God would have us to do. Our gifts are just laying there, dormant. Yeah. We need to get plugged in. I know we come to church and say, ah, they, they singing the same old song. They always sing. They, the same deacon is praying the same prayer. You can pray it right along with him. Amen. Word for word. I know, but, but watch this. Unless you get plugged in to what's going on in your fellowship, you can sit around and criticize uh, all you want to criticize uh, the pastor ain't preaching uh, and the deacons ain't deacon uh, and the choir ain't singing uh, but you need to get plugged in uh, you need to get right in the middle of that stuff uh, and stop complaining uh, and stop murmuring and get plugged in I wish I had some help in here can't get a bit of help in here this lamp right here this lamp right here Mama Cini used to have a lamp like this in Oak Muggy. I'd cross the railroad track. They didn't have any electricity out there, Pastor Snodgrass. Uh, so they lived by lamps. And let me tell you something. When you're operating a, a kerosene lamp, that's what proper people call it. We call them coal lamps. Uh, amen. Down where I come from, they call them coal lamps. Uh, and listen, watch this. Uh, that coal lamp. Uh, listen, when you burn that thing, uh, the, when the wick get out, messed up the globe get all black on the inside and every now and then every now and then mama city would have to take the globe off the lamp and wash it out on the inside couldn't see nothing everything it looked like the lunar eclipse the other day a solar eclipse couldn't see anything but oh god what if she got that globe washed out on the inside got it clean anybody seeing this anybody watching this every now and then we have to get clean on it won't he make you clean inside what won't god Oh, God, won't he make you clean inside? She got the clean, got the glove all clean, and then see that little wick? Hold it up, now. The 
that little white, that little white thing in there is a wig. It get all coated over. It wasn't good enough just to clean the globe out. After you clean the globe, bless God, you had to take some scissors and trim the, oh God, have I got some help in here. You had to clean the globe and then trim the wick and now you're in business. I come to tell you tonight, you need to be clean inside and you need to have your wick clean. You have to have that Come on and talk to you. You have to. You have to. I wish I had some help. Are you hearing me? Those are the kind of things. These things are useless unless they're being maintained. Unless the batteries are fresh or recharged. Unless the lamp is plugged in. Unless the globe is clean and the wick is trimmed, these things will not fulfill their purpose. I come to tell you tonight, unless you take an introspective look and get some junk out of your heart and get some stuff off the altar of your heart uh, and get Christ back in his proper place, uh, being the Lord of your life uh, and the ruler of your universe, uh, you're in trouble. Amen. And I say tonight, this is a good night to get it done. This is a good night to unpack some stuff. This is a good night to be washed from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. This night is defrag night. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If you've been sitting there thinking, I got a bucket full of stuff I need to haul on out of here. You need to make your way on down. I want you to come down and stand right here because I'm going to pray for you and stand in agreement with you. God will renew you. I don't know, everybody sitting on the pew like, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> if there's something that's been hindering you in your pursuit of godliness, some stuff weighing you down, the word of God says we ought to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily to be, beset us and to run with patience this race that is set before us. I wish I had, I got two people, anybody else? Yes, sir. I'm not rushing. I'm going to wait. Thank you, sir. You have long, come help me, Shirley, for sweet peace and for faith to increase you have earnest fervently pray but you can not have rest or be perfectly blessed until all along the altar he is laid. Watch this. Is your sweet rest as you yield him as you yield him your body and soul here it is I want you to get in your heart and in your mouth what it is you want the Lord to do for you listen to me very carefully 
First John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 says and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know listen to that a bunch of we knows we know we have the petitions that we desire of him and a petition is a prayer request and this is revival this is a time to unload stuff we're not here to judge anybody or peep into anybody's stuff what we're here to do is to help you to unload to be prepared to come in here shouting tomorrow night amen being honest with God and he'll be honest with you we're going to pray believe God to move stuff to renew you to recharge your batteries to get you plugged in where you need to be plugged in to clean your globes and to trim your wick and get you ready to serve him let us pray together Dear God, our Heavenly Father, here we are, your people, humbled in your presence with needs in our lives. We lift our voices to give adoration, thanksgiving, and praise to you. As you're worthy to receive the fruit of our lips, you have said that we ought to offer it frequently, daily, giving thanks to your name. So we bless the strong name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. And we praise you because you're well able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think you said according to the power that worketh in us. Now, Lord, your people are standing. They have exercised faith. They've gotten up out of their seats and came down the aisle. And I pray you reward their faith tonight. You have said in your word, without faith it's impossible to please you. And he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And tonight we're seeking. We're asking you to fasten to the walls of the hearts of your people the very thing that they stand in need of. Unload stuff that ought not be there. Give them total and absolute victory over all that the enemy would throw their way. We know he's a liar and the father of it. He'll try and deceive, hoodwink, con, bamboozle. But we pray you let the light of your glory shine. Give your people victory. Give them an insatiable appetite to read your word, a mind to seek your face in prayer, and a desire to fellowship frequently that they might grow. We bless you for it and we thank you for it galvanize us together in the power of your Holy Spirit and we'll be so very carefully giving name the praise is in the name of Jesus who is the Christ the son of the living God that we pray and call it done amen and amen 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 hey come on give the Lord a hand praise everybody tell him thank you hallelujah glory to the, the Lamb of God Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Snorgrass, for allowing me this privilege tonight. And thank all of you who came and are still standing. Thank you, Crystal Ewan, and your dear friend sitting next to you, putting up with all of this. Thank you. Denise, I know you tried to. Amen. <laughs> Let us say amen once again for this mighty word from Pastor Frazier. Well, I've never heard, matter of fact, I don't, I've never heard him preach when he didn't preach. <laughs> never heard him preach when he didn't preach uh, in everything. If I ever did, I would think that something was wrong with him. We thank the Lord for certainly this word tonight. This verse... This verse of scripture that he opened for us is probably one of those things that's the hardest for us to do. And that's examine ourselves. I noticed that, I noticed that even in preaching, Pastor, that uh, sometimes I'll say certain things and some folk will look at each other and some will say to me, I wish so-and-so would have heard that. 
Did you hear that? <laughs> Amen. We certainly thank, certainly thank the Lord for this word here uh, tonight. Uh, just in case, I realize the pastor just had a prayer for those of us standing and wanting to come help get things clear. But before we leave here tonight, we do want to extend an invitation yes. just in case yes. there's someone here who doesn't know Jesus. I think most of the faces I'm looking at, I'm familiar with and know. <clears throat> but do you know that nobody knows for sure whether or not you're saved but you and Jesus? So for, if there is one here tonight, we want you to know that he allowed you to wake up to see a brand new day. We don't know when he's coming back. That's right. But I can tell you this, today brought us one day closer. And you say, well, what if you don't come for a thousand years, Pastor? I'll be gone. Well, it don't make no difference whether it's a thousand years from now or something. The fact of the matter is you're going to see me. The scripture says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But the scripture says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul says, if you're willing to confess at your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Yes. If there's one here tonight, this invitation is for you. As Pastor Frazier said, it's not that we're trying to make anyone feel uncomfortable or embarrassed or something like that, but Jesus did say, if you're ashamed to own me before men, yes. I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father, which is in heaven. It's heard Pastor Fraser say this a number of times in the evangelistic uh, teachings and appeals and things. It's a good question. If you died right now, do you know that heaven is your home? I didn't say, are you hoping heaven is your home? I said, do you know heaven is your home? Because if you don't know, you ought not leave this sanctuary tonight until you do. It's just that serious. Yes. So if there's one here tonight, we invite you to come. And we realize that we're in the setting of the sanctuary of where the Congregation of Progressive Baptist Church <clears throat> gathers and worship. <clears throat> but this emphasis tonight is not on the locality of a local congregation. This invitation is about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Bless you. So that even if you come down at aisle tonight, if you're here, you don't have to be here. This is not the only church preaching the gospel. Yes. But you have to begin with Jesus. Because there's been countless thousands that's gone on to the other side been in church all their life and then discovered that they didn't that Jesus didn't know them. You don't want to be like that. So if there's one here tonight, certainly we invite you to come. Daryl, I don't know if you have a particular song or we sing a verse or two with the case of someone here who the Holy Spirit may be touching their heart, touching their mind. There's one here, we invite you to come.
Amen. We see there is none, <clears throat> but there is always room. Let us say amen again. Please, um, please be in prayer for Sister Mary in Eskridge. We understand it this afternoon. She had to go to the hospital. Her daughter had to be taken to the hospital over in is it Providence. Is that, is that it? Providence. And so certainly want to be in prayer for her. Uh, we understand that she had something kind of like what I had a couple, three times at TIA and discovered that there were some other things. And so certainly let's be in prayer for her. I don't have her name. Sister Eskridge, do you have her name? Leela? Akila? Okay. Eskridge, okay. And certainly want to add her to our uh, prayer list this evening. And also, Progressive, um, I want to remind you, Pastor, I don't know if you got this or not. <clears throat> Our state convention president is going to be in town, Lord willing, on Thursday. Um, and he's going to be in town for the purpose of going down to the city hall uh, before the city council because one of the issues that the city council is going to be uh, talking about is um, putting the uh, city park property that Western wants to buy on the ballot. Since it's city property, city park property, uh, the city council has to approve it, which is, as we understand, the city council has. But the second piece of it is that the city, the public has to approve it, which means it has to be placed on the ballot. So he's going to be in town, Lord willing, on Thursday to go into this meeting at City Hall at 3 o'clock. And he's asking all of the pastors, uh, or he did ask all the pastors, uh, that's part of our state convention to announce in the congregations where they were that if they and could, could come and bring at least uh, 10 to 20 of their members, what they're wanting to do is try to, you know, get as many of us down there as possible, try to pack it out. <clears throat> we don't have to say anything. We don't have to answer any question. But from his perspective, you know, sometimes, and we know that this is true, that uh, numbers speak volumes. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, um, as I don't know what else is on the city council agenda, so I'm not quite sure what point the uh, property will come up. But according to him, um, shouldn't take more than about an hour. Uh, so progressive, we understand that there's been one of you that's made a comment that you'd like to go with. There's anybody else. Please let Brother Wesley or Brother Sinville or myself know. And uh, if there's enough of us, then we'll meet over here probably about 2.15 on Thursday, get on a church van and go down, go downtown. Then we went to, we're about having 10 or 12 cars trying to pay for all them cars and just get on a church van and go down there uh, and go up, to the, go up to City Hall. But we do need your help uh, and do need your prayers. And uh, Western's moving now. Things are developing. Uh, but here's another piece of it, and, and it takes our prayers and support. So please consider that and give consideration to it. Thank you again, uh, Pastor Frazier, for this word here tonight. And I'm going to ask each of you to be in prayer for this revival on tomorrow night. Um, how many of you are on Facebook? Come on, don't fool me now. I know there's more of you on Facebook than that. <laughs> Some of y'all I seen, you don't know I seen you. <laughs> but what I would like for you to do, what I would like for you to do is I'd like for you to spread the word on Facebook about this revival. I mean, if people can get on Facebook and talk about all kind of junk, that's a, then, then, then we can get on there and talk about Jesus. Invite them to this revival tomorrow night and on Friday night. And progress, I'm going to ask you that as we go in our various places, that the Lord brings people across our path. Um, and don't be afraid to share with them. Don't be afraid to witness to them uh, and invite them to revival. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask Pastor Frazier now to come back and, and give us in close remarks. We won't have the official benediction until Friday night. So we'll just have a closing remark and a closing prayer as he might want to give it tonight. <clears throat>
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. One last time, let the church, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen God has spoken so let the church say amen let peace and love be multiplied to you in Jesus name amen, amen. amen.